Hi and welcome to a simultaneous linear equations and quadratic equations lesson. That's a long title with lots of equations in it. Maybe could have just said simultaneous linear equations and quadratics. Anyway, welcome. For those of you who are tortured by me, you will be expected to do that work there. Thank you so much. Um, otherwise, welcome from internet land. How are we doing? So look, in year 10, we have spent a lot of time working with simultaneous equations. Those are those horrible equations where you would have had sort of 3x plus 2y equals 6 and 8x minus y is equal to 12. Please don't try and solve that. I've just made it up. And you would be asked to solve them and you would do it by elimination where you would uh, do that really random thing where you would multiply equation 1 by 7 and equation 2 by 43 and you would... Uh, end up making getting a sign wrong and then you'd have to add them and take them away depending on the color of the wind and then there would be substitution which lots of people would be like oh yeah but that was really complicated because you'd have to rearrange things and then there was by the CAS calculator oh don't really have the CAS calculator put it in and thank you very much you solved for me but again what were we actually doing when we solved simultaneous equations well believe it or not we were finding points of intersection we were trying to find where these points, uh, these, these lines cross. Now remember, equations can be written in both gradient and intercept form. That's this form here. So when we write things in y equals mx plus c, that's gradient and intercept form. Right? Or it can be just written in intercept form. And this is an example of intercept form. So 3x plus 4y is equal to 12. Remember the way we like that is because you know we know this is the line y equals 0. We know that's the line x equals 0. It helps us then find two crossing points. And as such, we can draw the line really, really quickly. So depending on our need, we choose to write equations of straight lines in particular forms. Right. So here we go. So when we just have a look, so here is my equation of uh, y, uh, sorry, x plus y equals 4. It crosses through 4, and it crosses through 4 there, even when I rearrange it. So this is in intercept form, and this is in gradient intercept form. Same equation, and as you can see, both goes through. All right, Just random thing to, to actually do, but just to prove they're the same equations. Now, when we are then trying to solve simultaneous equations, then there are three cases that we need to consider. One is they intersect at only one point. So in this situation, I have x plus y equals 4, and 2x minus y equals 2. And so an exam question would say, you know, solve the following simultaneous equations. That's how they would have been written. When I graph them, I notice they intersect at one point, which tells me that the solution would be x equals 2 and y equals 2. Now, when you're solving these things, please remember you are solving and finding a coordinate. So your answer should always be coordinates. That's one uh, way of uh, doing something. The second way is that they never intersect, as in the lines are parallel. If we look at these two equations here, these lines are parallel. How do we know this? Well, firstly, the 3x plus 4y is exactly the same. This 6 and this 20 are, in fact, just uh, the points of intersection on the y-axis. They don't intersect at 6 and 20. Please don't think that, right? Because remember, this equation here is not written in y equals mx plus c form. So you can't just turn around and say it crosses at 6. But it's interesting to note that when you have equations there, the left-hand sides are the same and it is only the numbers that differ, that they are then parallel. And we use that as a test in sort of methods 1 and 2 and methods 3 and 4. So they are never, ever going to meet. There's never going to be a solution to that graph. And I suppose the third one is they are exactly the same line. Now, for those of you who are wondering what on earth that means, I've just used Desmos, a great graphing uh, software package, to sort of help me show that this line here, 3x plus 4y equals 6, and 6x plus 8y equals 12 are exactly the same line. Even you can check that, because if I take the first equation and multiply everything by 2, I get the second equation. So they are the same line. In this situation, where they are the same line, they have what we call infinite solutions. Now, why? Because if you remember, a solution is where they cross. And if you've got two lines with the same equation and they're sitting directly on top of each other, well, ultimately, they cross infinite number of times. So there's an infinite number of solutions. Oh, I feel like some language is coming on. Now, what has this got to do with lines and curves? Well, let's make my screen a little bit smaller for a moment. Uh, if you think about it, a straight line can cross a quadratic in one of three ways. So now we've got a straight line 
and we've got a quadratic. And in much the same way as we looked at here, where there were three cases, they could cross once, they could never cross, or they could basically be the same line, we have the same situation here. So first things first, they have two points of intersection. Drawing a graph, I can see that my red line here is the uh, quadratic, and my blue line here is my straight line. And just by using Desmos to, uh, to show you visually, there are very definitely two crossing points. There are two solutions. Now, how do you find those points of intersection? Well, what do we know? We know at this point here and this point here, the x values and the y values are exactly the same, right? So at this point here, the y values are identical. Now, if I have two equations, and I know at certain points, the y values are identical. If the y values are identical, it must mean that the other parts of those equations are identical too. All right? Does that make sense? So, in this situation, if these two things here are equal, then these two things here must also be equal. And as such, I can write my equation as 2x minus, uh, sorry, 2 minus x is equal to x squared plus 2x minus 8. Basically, shortcut alert, just put the two equations equal to each other. Make sure they're in the format y equals and y equals first, otherwise all hell breaks loose. But just put the two equations equal to each other. And what do you notice? OMG, I have a quadratic. Well, not really, because ultimately it doesn't look like a quadratic. I can't solve this quadratic at the moment because to solve a quadratic, I have to make sure it's equal to zero. So what do I do? Well, I just make sure that I move this stuff over here. All right, so I collect like terms. I simplify. And I could then become, what is it? So x squared, add an x to both sides would be plus 3x, and then uh, take away 2 from both sides, minus 10 equals zero. So I could go on and solve this, but come on a moment. This is a CAS course. Why don't we just use our CAS calculator? Those of you who are Casio ClassPad users, of which I am currently working in the school, then this is what you would do. But the same idea is very true for the TI Inspire. Put solve in. What was the equation? Well, it was 2 minus x equals x squared plus 2x minus 8, comma x, and lo and behold, out come my x values of minus 5 and 2. There you go. That's the end of my question, isn't it? I've done it. Uh, no. Remember, you are looking for the points of intersection. So having found the x values, you would then need to substitute those into an equation to find the y values. Now, a lot of people go to me, well, which equation? Remember, you've got two. y equals x squared plus 2x minus 8, and y equals 2 minus x. All right, okay, well, this is challenging. Which one of those equations do I use? So remember, you've now been given the x values of where the two equations meet. So at that one point, those two x values, both equations can be used to find the y value. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm definitely not going to use a quadratic. I'm going to use this. So if an x is equal to negative 5, y becomes equal to 2 minus negative 5. And when x is equal to 2, then y is equal to 2 minus 2. So that gives me y equals 0. So my coordinate value is 2 comma 0. And that gives me uh, y is equal to 7. And so my coordinate value is minus 5, 7. Does that tie up with what I'm expecting? It is. Again, remember, when you're finding points of intersection, you must express your answers in terms of coordinates. Here we go. One point of intersection. So one point of intersection in this situation is where the graph, all right, still a straight line, just touches at one point. Doesn't make any difference with regards to the theory because, again, at this one point, we know that the y values are the same, which means that those sections of my equation must be identical. So again, I can just equate them. x squared minus 6x plus 8 must equal minus 2x plus 4. Cas course, bang it in your calculator. We could do what we did previously and bang that in our calculator, or we can simplify it. So what we've done here is we've simplified it as x squared minus 4x plus 4 equals 0. Again, no real reason to do it, just to show you that there's different ways of doing it. Put that in my CAS calculator with solve. And what do I find out? Well, I find out that my x value is 2. How would I find my y value? I would put it into probably my easiest uh, equation, which is minus 2x plus 4 
we know that x was equal to 2, so therefore y is equal to minus 2 times 2 plus 4, so y is equal to 0. And again, I would state my coordinate as 2 comma 0, and we see there. So there, there was just one point of intersection, and obviously there will be a situation with no points of intersection. How would you do this on your calculator? Exactly the same thing. If they've got an intersection, the y values are the same, put those two equations equal to each other and solve it on my CAS calculator. And the calculator is so lovely, it even just goes, nah, no solution. All right, so you would know that they don't currently cross. All right, let's go back to the discriminant. What does it have to do with the price of fish? I don't know, I love that saying. I've really got to try and find a different saying. But what does the discriminant have to do with the price of fish? Well, remember, the discriminant will tell you whether a quadratic will have no solution, one solution, or two solutions. And it also works with the crossing points of quadratics and straight lines. So here is an example. We have y equals x squared plus 2x minus 8. And we have the graph of y equals 2 minus x. When they cross, we can see they have two solutions. Now, funnily enough, when I was back in the UK, we had to do all sorts of random stuff. And much of this was sort of because we didn't have calculators or CAS. And, and one of the things we used to have to do was actually combine equations. Now, what I want you to see... Is at this moment in time, if I was actually to extract this down and read off the value there, I get x is equal to negative 5. So that's obviously one solution, and I've got a value there of x is equal to 2. So x is equal to 2 is another solution. What actually happens when I combine those two equations and graph them. I mean, previously we went up here and everyone seemed very happy for me just to sort of put the two equations and rearrange them, but we didn't actually ever plot that graph. Well, the reason we didn't is because, well, we're just remiss. We sometimes miss out some of the most important stuff of maths. So if I take these two equations, and what are they? x squared plus 2x minus 8 and x 2 minus x and put them equal to each other. So x squared plus 2x minus 8 is equal to 2 minus x. And I'm going to try and rearrange them. I'm going to add an x to both sides to get rid of this. So I get x squared plus 3x and I'm going to take away 2 from both sides. Minus 10 is equal to 0. So the question is, what now happens when I sketch that graph? Well, lo and behold, I've sketched the graph. And what do you notice has happened? Look at actually where my crossing points are. It actually has told me in this situation that my x solution is equal to negative 5 and my x solution is equal to 2. Now, we have to ignore these zero values because we've just fudged the graph so that it crosses at zero. But knowing that we've got this minus 5 and this 2, I would then take it back and put it into either one of my equations here and find my solutions. Right, so by putting these two equations together, you're just creating a different quadratic. And you're just saying to that quadratic, well, show me where my intersections are. There's no real benefit of doing it. It just makes my life easier for us. So we need to be able to use the discriminant to help us find solutions to more complex questions. So here's a question. Find the value of c such that y is equal to x plus c is a tangent to that parabola. Right. Back up. What does that actually mean? Let's assume we have a parabola here. Don't know that it's actually going to look like that. But we're now saying that this straight line has to be a tangent to the parabola. Now I'm just going to draw it this way. So there's going to be a point where this is a tangent. Now there are all sorts of ways. Now remember that value of C could be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It could be lots. And that means there's a whole family of curves that are described by the general equation of y equals x plus c. Right? Any number of crossing points. But only one of those values of c, only one, will allow me to just touch the curve that I'm looking for. And that's what we're looking to find. So basically, if it's touching at a tangent, it means it is touching the curve at just one point. And if it is touching at one point, then we're going back to the idea there is only one solution. Hold on a moment. One solution. I'm hearing this. The discriminant is calling. If I'm looking for one solution, I need my b squared minus 4ac to be equal to zero. All right, so I need my discriminant to be equal to zero. But I'm looking for where they touch. And again, when they touch, what do I know about the two equations? At that one point, the two y values are the same. 
which means I can equate those two equations. And that's exactly what we're doing. So here is my first equation, the x squared minus x minus 12. And here is my second equation. At that one point where they touch, I can now rearrange it. So I've uh, taken away an x from both sides. And I've, what have I done? Taken a c away from both sides. And here we go. There is my quadratic equation. So I now need to find the values of C. How do I do that? Well, because I can't solve that. I've got X's and C's. So I have to use my discriminant. And I know that B squared minus 4AC must be equal to 0 for it to have this one solution to be a tangent. And that's what we've done here. We've used that rule. B squared minus 4AC equals 0. We'll find that point. There we go. So what do we have? So minus, so what did we have? B was equal to negative 2. And C is equal to. Now, lots of people get confused here. Remember, quadratic equations are written in the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, anything in front of the x squared is the a. Anything that's in front of the x is the b. And anything that's left is equal to the plus c. So when I look at what's left, I basically get c is equal to minus c minus 12. Yeah, I know it's confusing to say c is equal to minus c. We're not actually solving that equation. We're just trying to say that that's what we're going to put in. So here is my b squared minus 4ac. What do we do? So minus 2 squared is 4 minus 4 lots of minus c minus 12 is equal to 0. So all I've done is times minus 4 by 1 to get me minus 4. I'm now going to multiply out that bracket to give me plus 4c minus 12, 24, 36, and 48. No, plus 48 is equal to 0. So what do we get? 4c is equal to 48 plus 4, which is, sorry, plus 52 is equal to 0. So 4c is equal to minus 52. So c is equal to minus 1 and 4, 8, 12, 13. So there we go. I've now found my c value to be minus 13. What does that do? What does that help me with? Well, I can now say specifically that the line y is equal to x minus 13 will intersect that graph of uh, x squared minus x minus 12 at just one point, hence being a tangent. Let's go back to the question one more time because I really do need to reiterate. It's the language. So where there is a tangent you know two things. One, there's one solution. And two, that these two equations must be equivalent at that one point. All right, I think I'm done with this. So thanks very much for listening. Simultaneous linear equations and quadratic equations. Good luck if you're actually doing the exercises. Hopefully it's made sense. And I look forward to seeing you next time. It's been so great having you watch this video that I'd like to see you again and again and again. Wow, we could make some amazing maths together. So if you'd like to and you'd like to be updated as to when I upload new videos, why not subscribe by clicking the button on the right? Otherwise, if you want to click and see another video created for this type of series, then click the video on the left. All right. Well, you have an awesome day and I look forward to see you again.